muted. We'll be getting started in just a minute here. Before we get started, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping things. So Lori, if you wouldn't mind just switching to the next slide so we can go over all of these housekeeping items. Thank you. Just so you know, the audience will be on mute to cut down on background noise. If there are any questions during the presentation, please use the chat box to submit them to the organizers and we will get them addressed with the FAQ at the end of the webinar. You should also not be able to see any of the other attendees. If you can for some reason, please again use that chat box to let us know and we'll get that addressed. We will be recording today's session and we'll be providing a recorded version to everyone after uh, within the next few days. So be on the lookout for that. Our, court, oh, our host, Lori Rangel, will take us through the changes for Silent Manager 3.2, which is in production, as well as upcoming changes for Silent Phone version 6.0 for Android and iOS. Following this, we'll take a look at the 2017 roadmap, and we will be doing a live demo of Silent Phone before we finish out with the Q&A. Now let's get things started. Lori, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Gabby. Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Lori Rangel. I'm the Director of Products at Silent Circle. I jokingly refer to myself as a reformed accountant. <laughs> I spent 13 years in public accounting before turning uh, to a life of systems administration and security, IT security work. Um, I am a real life ninja in training. I've been studying Shotokan style karate for the last four years with my son, who's now surpassed me and is a junior instructor at the dojo. So taking instructions from your 14 year old son is a rather humbling experience. Um, I joined Silent Circle back in 2012 when it all began. So I've seen the evolution of our product set from the very beginning of uh, disparate messaging and phone applications to what you see today in a unified uh, application. Gabby, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Lori. As mentioned, I'm Gabby Arancibia, and I run marketing here at Silent Circle. I've been with the company since December of 2016. And you can find me all over social media promoting our posts. If you're looking for the latest information about Silent Circle, follow us across social media on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. A couple of fun facts about me. At RSA one year, Soul Asylum sang me happy birthday. And back in the day, I had some pretty awesome hot pink hair. Lori, should we get things started? No pictures or it never happened, Gabby. Uh, we'll All get right. There, maybe. Yeah, let's get straight into the agenda. Um, what I'm going to do is go through an overview of the products with a slide deck. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about the roadmap for 2017, and then we'll jump right into a live demonstration with Android and iOS and some Q&A session at the end of that. Again, if you have any technical difficulties, um, please shout out to Gabby in the chat section and we'll try to get those resolved for you. All right, I want to talk a little bit about Silent Manager version 3.2, which we launched in February. In case you haven't been in the Silent Manager in a while, we've expanded the capabilities to include um, some admin defined column sorting. Um, this just creates a more personal, personalized uh, experience for the user page so that when you're sorting through the user base for reporting purposes or trying to locate someone, it's a little bit easier and more intuitive. And it also makes bulk editing of your newly added users a little easier. We've expanded that to work on the group page as well. So um, it's just a little easier to do some maintenance inside the manager. We added um, the ability to reset a user's account. This was something previously and still is available for the individual user. Um, but what we've done now is passed that feature over to the admin. So in, in an instance where let's say the person is no longer with the company and you want to ensure that um, and you haven't really received their device back in IT yet, 
you can reset their account and it resets all of the conversations in silent phone and removes their devices from their account and any S3 files that might be hanging out there in the cloud. You can also privatize the user directory setting. So by default, everyone is visible within your organization in the Enterprise Manager, uh, but you can make certain individuals private so that you can't look them up by first name, last name, or email address. We also added circle and circle capabilities. Um, if you aren't familiar with what that is, if you haven't heard us talk about it before, it's basically a, a mechanism for encapsulating your communications from within your organization so that people outside the silence or outside your organization in the silent circle directory cannot contact you unless you give them strict permission to do so. And you can do that by organization or by individual. So if you want to learn more about that, please reach out to your sales executive and we'll get you set up with a demonstration. We also added a few more admin defined alert settings. So if let's say someone deletes a device off of their account and adds a different device that you may not be approved, um, it'll alert you that that device has been added and you can reach out to them. We also expanded some capabilities, uh, making it a little bit more useful with Microsoft Windows 10 uh, Edge browser. All right, let's jump right into Silent Phone version six. We've ratcheted up the versioning number to six on both iOS and Android, and there's a reason for that. Um, we've unified the UI UX a little bit, but more importantly, we've introduced group messaging. Um, group messaging is been in beta for about three weeks now, and we plan to launch early next week or maybe towards the end, depending on how testing is going. We're getting a lot of really good, solid feature feedback. Um, there's some bug reports coming in from our user base that's on beta. If you're not participating in the beta program, we're always looking for feedback. So it's an invite only system. If you want to reach out to your sales rep for an invite link, we'll make sure that you get on that as soon as you, as soon as possible. With Android, it's just a matter of signing in with your Google account and telling them you want to be a part of the beta program. Um, the applications will update automatically whenever there's a new beta. With Apple, they keep it a little bit more closely controlled, and we send you an invite link, and you have to download an application called Test Flight from the App Store. But it's pretty simple. It works the same way. It'll let you know when there is a beta available, and you can test it out. Excuse me. We streamlined the UI uh, for both Android and iOS so that um, they offer just a more unified look and feel and it eases the burden, um, the training burden on your IT admins. Um, so things like the starter page are exactly the same. Uh, we've taken away the tabbed design in iOS. We, we launched a tab free design in Android last year and we had overwhelming success with that. So what we did was we just simplified that and brought that over to the iOS platform. There's a couple of things that we, we had to keep very specific to the, the, to the platform so that people who are used to using iOS and people who are used to using Android, um, you know, tapping versus long pressing and things like that. We kept those based on the, on the platform as much as possible, but we unified the design. And in versions that are coming out after six, we're gonna continue that trend so that um, you know, it takes the same amount of clicks in the same direction to get to a particular feature or functionality. Something else that we've done uh, first with Android and we will continue to do with iOS in, in later builds is an onboarding helper screen. These just walk the user through, if they're a fresh install, um, how to do certain things, how to make a phone call, um, how to look up a contact, how to add someone as a contact to your local directory. And so these, these actual helper screens are going to additionally reduce the IT burden and training on your enterprise. Um, we're going to bring that into iOS, as I said, but it just didn't make it into version six. If you want to, if you're installing over a production build when this release comes out and you want to take a look at those screens, you just go into settings and then there is an additional options. Just it says to turn on the tutorial screens or reset the tutorial screen. So you'll be able to see what those look like. We've also done a great amount of work with the, uh, the API functionality that does contact discovery on your device and the contact lookup on the silent circle directory. So your enterprise directory, and it's a lot faster, it's a lot more intuitive. We've done things um, like if you don't have silent world, we don't show you the contacts that are not silent circle uh, connected on the device. That way 
you're not trying to make a phone call when you can't uh, to a PSTN line or a cell phone number. All right, let's take a look at the screens really quickly. These are just a sample. We'll get into the demonstration a little bit later in the slide deck. Um, you'll see here with San Silent Phone Android, we've uh, just brought it back to a clean, uh, bright design with new iconography. The start button is exactly the same as it was before. You just press on the um, plus button there to start a conversation, and that automatically populates the local contacts that are Silent Circle uh, related. And then you could just do a directory search as you had before. But again, as I said, it pops up very quickly. This is kind of a this is just a preview of the overview screens. Um, as you tap on the areas that it's telling you to tap on, it will guide you through the next step, the next phase of creating a conversation. And again, we have taken some things out of the settings and streamlined the profiles so that um, they're in the same position on both iOS and Android. We did remove a few of the advanced settings. Um, and again, we're going to open up a web portal for you to give us feedback on some of those settings that may you may have um, enjoyed using before, but we took them out because over, overwhelming response said that they just weren't useful or they were too complicated or just not understood. And so we're gonna bring everything back to a baseline and then start adding features that make sense for the enterprise. All right, and of course we have group messaging. Um, we've been in trials now with upwards of 20, 17 to 20 um, participants in the group. Anyone can start a group conversation. Anyone within a group conversation can add additional people. And there's some alerts to let everyone in the, in the conversation know that someone's been added to the conversation or someone's left the conversation. You can do a lot of um, customization as well. You can change the avatar for the group. So by default, it just shows the, the group member's avatar, as you see at the very top there. You can change the name of the group, and anyone in the group can change that name. And again, you get alert, an alert saying that that group name had been changed. You can also jump into a private conversation with anyone in the group by going into the group details page. And I'll show you how to do that later in the demo. Um, but you can tap on that person and start a private conversation with them. You can also really easily add people to your contacts list in Android. It's just by tapping on the um, people icon with the plus button next to it. So if someone's been added to the group that you might not necessarily have as your local contact, you can add them very quickly. And again, this is something unique that we do. A lot of the free products out there take a snapshot of your user directory on your local device and then upload it to their servers and then you become the product. We don't do that. We actually just peer into it. Um, we do a matching with a portion of it that's been hashed um, up to our servers. And so at no time do we have your data on our devices or on our servers from your device. And again, this is a, just a snapshot of the user directory. What we've done is if there's an exact match, we show that here. I don't know if you can see my mouse uh, controls, but at the very top, you'll see the exact match. So if you're doing a search and someone actually has, you know, that particular user ID, it'll show with an exact match here. And there's a little emblem here at the bottom of that avatar that says this is an actual Silent Circle user. Um, and you can just tap on that person to start the conversation if that's your intent. Um, anybody that shows up inside your local directory will also, again, show up on your Silent Circle contacts if you have them there. Um, if that Silent Circle contact has a username, they have a telephone number, it'll also show that telephone number as well. All right. Now, I'm showing you a preview of iOS version 3.2 just to give you a refresher of what it looked like before. We had the tabs down here at the bottom, and you had to click here to go to a contact to look someone up click here to start a conversation, here to start a phone call right away, and here to get to the profile. And then after you got to the profile, you had to click here to get to the settings up here in the upper right-hand corner. That was just messy. I have a rule. If it takes more than three clicks to get to 90% of the functions in the application, we've done something wrong in the design and we need to go and look at it again. So that was the intent when we moved away from the tabless design. Again, you'll see it's very unified with Android. It's a clean white background with similar iconography. Um, the 
plus button in the top right hand corner is what we were used to seeing before so we didn't change that for ios we're talking about adding that floating red plus button down at the bottom just as we have on android just to unify it a little bit better make it more prominent we've changed again from the tabless design so that your settings are behind this hamburger menu on the left hand side it's a pull out drawer if you tap on that, um, you'll see your, your profile settings here in that second screen. Additionally, that green horizontal line indicator at the left-hand side is your network indicator. If that should ever remain red, or say blue and then turn green, or blue and then turn red again, close out the application or check your network, condition, uh, check your network connectivity, or both, because that means you're not connected to the Silent Circle servers. And as we did with Android, we've streamlined the settings page, the profile page, everything is um, very much streamlined. We pulled out some of the more advanced settings that weren't being used or were not easily understood. And again, we'll add those back with recommendations from our enterprise customers. And the same way that the uh, directory lookup works on Android, it now works the same on iOS. There were some variances in previous versions that were confusing to some folks, but again, very fast, streamlined. And here's a look at Silent Phone iOS version six group messaging details page, very similar layout and design. Again, some nuances for the iOS platform. There's some, uh, and I'll show this in the demonstration, there are some slide out hidden features that let's say you wanted to uh, add Alice Winter here, you just slide it to the right and you'll see an add to contacts button if they don't exist on your local contacts. There's also a way to make a phone call with them directly. Now, I will tell you that if you're added to a group and you don't wish to participate in that group, you just have to go into group details and say, leave the group. However, you can't rejoin the group until someone invites you back. So if you did that by accident or you had to um, delete the application for whatever reason or wipe it, which we've left in the, in the features, we've left the wipe silent phone feature. If you have to be added back, you just need to send a personal message to someone uh, letting them know you need to be back in that group and they can add you back, anyone, not just the person who created the group. Um, I will say that version six is compatible with previous versions. So if you're not ready to roll out to iOS six or uh, version six, Silent Phone version six, um, what you'll need to do is let that person know that you intend to use group messaging because the only thing that isn't compatible is group messaging. If you were to add someone who hadn't upgraded just yet, they don't get an alert saying that they can upgrade. Um, that was a more of an advanced feature we didn't have time to put in. All right. And I won't go through the particulars with these screens because they're exactly the same on Android. All right, let's take a look at the, this is again, just a very brief overview of the roadmap for 2017. We're introducing Silent Desktop. Um, in addition to Silent Phone version six, our engineers have been hard at work in transitioning our product set over to a desktop platform and it'll be browser agnostic so it'll run on any browser um, and at first we're going to introduce messaging only and then we'll introduce start bolting on the features that you're you've grown to know and love about silent phone so we'll have some video we'll have file attachment and voip uh, capabilities later on down the road And sort of a natural evolution of silent phone on the desktop is a meeting capability. And we haven't fully fleshed out everything that that means. We're still talking about exactly what we want that to, to entail. But just as a, a broader tool set to have in terms of encrypted communications, if you have the ability to invite people to a meeting that's fully encrypted peer to peer, um, I think that that adds so much more value to the enterprise applications. And again, we're still looking at the manager and how we can enhance that. We're looking at ways that we can um, do more policy control on the applications themselves, do more granular level policy control over the users and the applications that they're running, device specific things that we can do. We can tr control the number of devices that they can add. Um, so we're really making this a much more robust management tool
Okay, and give me just one second as I transition to the demo. Six, or I'm sorry, Apple iPhone six. Um, very clean user start page, right? So let's start a conversation really quickly. Click on the plus button. And we're going to start a group conversation. So I need to add Jacob. So I'm going to look for Jacob. Okay. And I only want to talk to Jacob Lane in my directory. So I'm going to add him to the group. And I'm going to talk to Amy. And then click on the green checkbox to start that conversation. Now, this is important. Jacob doesn't have any registered devices, so I won't be able to communicate with him. So everyone in this group that's been added knows that they have no registered devices. Okay, seems that way for Amy as well, which is not true. Let me just quickly remedy that. Spelling counts. Okay, we're gonna try it from Android and see where we go. Alice and Gabby, what is your user ID? I'll add you. Uh, it's GRNCBS. Okay, so as I said before, anyone can add members to the group. So Gabby, if, if I didn't get you there, I don't think I did, I'm sorry. Let's add you to the group and then I need you to add an additional person. You can add L Wrangle, okay? Can do. So even after the conversation has started, you can add additional people to the conversation. Okay. And you added me. I actually have myself as a different person on the Android device, so it looks like someone else joined, but that's me. Uh, okay, so Gabby, I want you to go into your device and change the burn timer. So for others in the group and for demonstration purposes, you just click on the burn time slider as you did before, slide it up or down to change the burn timer. And Gabby's just changed it to four weeks. And you'll see, I didn't touch that. Gabby was taking control and changing the burn timer. I'm going to tap on, it's a semi long press on the group name at the very top. Let me go back and show you again. So up here in the black area where everyone's name is displayed, if I just want that to say product, tap where the group name is, backspace off of that. And we're going to say product. Click done. And now everyone gets an alert that we changed the name to product group. Pretty simple stuff. So again, I'm going to long press on that group name. 
and get to the group details page. And I want to add Gabby to my local contact. So just slide right on the iOS device on her uh, username, click on the plus symbol, and I'm gonna say create a new contact. On iOS, it automatically populates her first and last name and the contact entry for silent phone down here. Click done, and she's now a part of my local contacts. Let's say I wanted to call her directly. Slide right and tap on the handset. And there's her smiling face. We won't connect just so that we can move along. Um, if I wanted to just open up a private conversation with her, tap on it briefly and send her the message. And you'll see we've started a new thread with Gabby. So the encryption works exactly the same way that it did before with singular peer-to-peer -peer, uh, messaging. You're doing a complete ratcheting key exchange with each of the individual devices that you're connecting to. So for instance, if um, Gabby had two different devices joined with the same user ID, these messages would populate to every single device that she had using its own encryption mechanisms. Very simple, right? I'll take a look at just um, very briefly the settings changes in iOS, and then we'll move over to Android to kind of do a brief overview of how that works. And again, it's very similar, so the learning curve is much smaller. Okay, so if you tap on the green hamburger slide out drawer menu over here, we lovingly recall, refer to it as the hamburger menu, um, you'll see that you've got account, her avatar, her, her name, your name, I'm sorry, the user's name, and whether or not you're online, you've got the online indicator. If you tap on account details, it'll take you back to that familiar screen that shows what your phone number is, the organization you belong to, what your subscription plan looks like, and the number of remaining minutes. You can also, as you did before, check to see the number of devices that are provisioned with that user ID. And then just tap back to get back to the main screen. On the settings menu, what we've done, we've left the passcode. That was an overwhelming success with some of our customers. Um, we have uh, changed things in the user, uh, sorry, the, the user interface. Um, we've left native call support, which again is just a, a terrific improvement in the way that we answer phone calls on iOS, but we did streamline and take a few of the other advanced settings out of there that weren't being used. All right, let's jump over to, oh, I didn't talk about um, attachments. You can still attach photos, um, files up to 100 megabytes, share a video, record audio, share a contact. The only thing you can't do at this point is start a group voice conversation, but that's going to get bolted on in future evolutions. All right, let's talk a little bit about Android. That's on your right-hand side. We have the group conversation already started over there, but what I'm going to do is show you really quickly the um, tutorial screens. So go into settings, and under other options, reset tutorial screens. So now I'll see, oh, well, that's how I get to my settings account. If I tap on any other area of the screen, it'll tell me this is how you start a conversation. And to get through those pretty quickly, um, you just tap through the other, um, tap through the screens. This one's going to show you how to select a contact. This one's going to show you how to search or where to search. How to get to the dial pad. And that's it. Oh, sorry, there's another call screen. Once you get into the conversation, they've got a couple more other helper screens for you. And just tap on it quickly to just clean them out. Very simple. Okay, I think we've gotten to um, the end of our demonstration. If there are any questions that you want me to field, Gabby, um, are there any questions in the chat section? Yeah, we've gotten a couple questions. Okay. Um, and if just as one last reminder, if anyone does have questions that aren't addressed, please feel free to use the chat box to send them to us and we'll get them answered. So let's see, what is the release date for Silent Phone 6.0? 
as I mentioned, um, it's really dependent on the uh, the beta feedback that we're getting from customers, whether or not we have any major roadblock crashing bugs or anything like that. It's looking very good so far. We had intended to release this week, but because we found a couple of things that were um, detrimental to the overall use of group messaging, um, we decided to hold it back to be safe. So I'm expecting to see another release candidate come out this week, probably today actually, um, so we can get it into the review process through our QA department, through our uh, beta program users, and then possibly next week, probably towards the end of next week to be more conservative. Next question. Great. So that actually segues perfectly into the next question. We received a few questions about how to participate in the beta program and if customers are still able to participate in the beta for 6.0. Yes, absolutely. Um, and again, with 6.0, if you really would like to try out the beta program, just send your account rep an, a, a, a message saying that we approved it. Um, and I will get it done today. If you send me a request, I'll get it done today. Awesome, thank you. I know you addressed this one earlier, but just as a reminder for us all, is 6.0 backwards compatible? It is, except for the group messaging um, feature. So again, if you are communicating with someone who hasn't upgraded just yet, let them know that you're upgrading and you plan to add them to a group conversation so that they can do so as well. Great, thank you so much. Well, that looks like that's all we've gotten in terms of questions. If you do have questions after the fact, please contact your sales representative and they'll be able to get those answers to you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, or day, depending on your time zone. And we will be sending out the recording of today's session in the next several days. Thank you. Thanks guys. Have a great week.